I spent a couple of weeks programming my Minecraft clone and making major improvements since my last devlog. I also added a building feature where players can break and place voxels, as well as optimizations towards my Minecraft clone. If you missed my previous devlog of my voxel engine, I will have a link in the description. My first entry in to improve my Minecraft clone was to add some color towards the voxel terrain, designing the dirt and stone textures for the ground, where I want to make the game feel arcade with a retro gradient of mystery to which the player can explore the environment. Now, when it comes to creating voxel textures, I don't use anything fancy in terms of software. Instead, I use a simple program called a Sprite Pixel Editor, which does the job perfectly fine for creating pixel art textures and voxel textures, which I do recommend it. Link in the description. As for myself and the quality of these textures, I will consider this as programmer's art and a template to start from. Plus, creating voxel game without textures wouldn't look so good and to be one of those games that creates everything with a single pixel. As I don't recall myself being a perfect pixel artist or that person who really cares about every single pixel on screen online, but I have to start somewhere and to be content with the skill level that I have. Now of course the voxels will use something called a texture atlas, telling the engine what the texture to use by indexing a fragment of the full image. With that being said, we can be able to tell where the image is from the big image and save in memory for our voxel engine. Alright, let's take a look at the textures and the stone actually looks pretty good. Um, if I zoom up on this, you can see there's actually a very cool gradient pattern that shows up. Grass side, we can see the grass side blends in with the stone even though grass does not grow on stone but we'll probably change that in the future uh the grass top um i'm not really satisfied with it looks kind of like cereal um it just kind of looks a little ugly but it just doesn't look right um but i think this is a good starting point though the water is very blue um i will end up changing that maybe a little bit more darker and to be a little bit more natural blending in with the other elements of this world but i think the stone i'm really satisfied with and i'll keep it like this next just like in every good minecraft clone should have the player should have the ability to break and place voxels instead of having a static boring mesh that makes them want to quit the game all the time hence making their environment more alive and having the freedom to build whatever they desire we start by casting an array shown on screen from the player's position using the camera's direction I as you can see, when the red arrow hits a voxel, we can edit either breaking or placing. Now here's what the code looks. I start by assigning a step and a length for precision measurement. Then I set the direction using the camera direction scaled with the steps. Next I set the raycast to be the camera's player's position of the voxel. Then finally from their perspective, it will travel until an intersection of a voxel with its data structure occurs, where I have the ray to pass air voxels and water, so whenever it hits solid voxels it will return their position now just on the side if you want to check out this ray casting algorithm i will have a link in the description towards the repository in github i also added this small feature where if the player is selecting a voxel it will create a little box around it using a box manager class shown here now let's take a look on what we got all right so and it works yay now we're able to place and break voxels now in our engine pretty cool and works very well actually surprisingly right now we can only place grass because i set it to place grass but anything else we can just dig down just keep going and then yeah now let's see if we can pass through water yep pass through water just like we have told it and everything seems to be working fine all right now before we start updating dirty chunks that needs their mesh regeneration we need to discuss something very important that is updating chunks in a multiplayer setting we want to have chunks update so all players can see when somebody places a voxel thus like a synchronization between the client and the server sending data between each other like a conversation acts in the server to perform a task for the connected client therefore we call this a channel in this case libgdx the framework i'm using does not have a very rich network communication api which which leads us to only two options. That is, we either spend more painful nights building or designing a network API to which we make our fingers bleed while chugging gallons of Java coffee, or we use a well-designed API called Netty, which can easily be downloaded from the website, which is strictly made for asynchronous event-driven programming, link in the description. We also want a networking framework that won't take all memory creating thousands of objects which aren't necessary. Another reason why Netty is a great fit, it also includes useful data management classes like ByteBuff compared with Java buffers. 
Plus the little experience I had in network transmission, I did not know that TCP protocols ran byte streams simultaneously for every message until I did my research on the internet. It literally took me a full week of pain trying to figure this out, but I was able to manage building a successful decoder with some help from people on Discord. As you can see, I started off by checking if there were enough bytes to read in the header of the packet. If the size was invalid, it would discard the information resetting the state of the decoder. If the packet was large coming halfway, the decoder would wait until all data was received before processing the packet. As you can see, it was quite a simple approach but a headache to figure out. Alright everyone, that's everything in today's video. Be sure to check out the previous deadlog for more content. I will have the link in the description as well as the links for the resources I used in this video. Have a good one, which sometimes drop the packets, often causing the decoder to get stuck.